فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر Five simple ayat, five beautiful ayat. But this Surah Al-Qadr, how is it connected? What is the relationship between it and the Surah that came before it? This is Surah Al-Alaq that we just finished. First and foremost, Surah Al-Alaq began telling the story of how revelation began. Iqra. That was how revelation began. The angel came, told the messenger to recite. How did it begin? This Surah tells us when did it begin. So while the previous Surah addressed the question of how, this Surah addresses the question of when? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. It is no doubt that we sent it down in the night of Al Qadr. I'm not translating it as a night of, night of power, how it's commonly translated, the night of power. We have to have a little bit of a long discussion about what Qadr means. But for now, the first connection between the two, how did it begin? And this one is, when did it begin? That's the first connection between these two surahs. The second, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the previous, I keep saying it over and over, الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمْ عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ He taught with the pen, he taught the human being what he couldn't have known. And in this surah, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What will make you know what Laylatul Qadr is? Previous surah said, he taught him what he didn't know, and this surah says, how will you know what Laylatul Qadr is? It's asking the question, meaning you don't have the knowledge, Allah will give a specific knowledge to you, the Messenger وسلم, that he didn't have before. Another beautiful correlation between the two surahs that a Sha'arawi rahimahullah points out, uh, and also Dr. Fadl Salih Samirai, incredible. The last ayat of Surah Al Alaq, Allah says, Wasjud, Waqtarib, make sajda and come close to Allah. What's the, what's the opportunity in which you can come closest to Allah? What is the night of sajda and coming close to Allah? Laylatul Qadr, the very first thing in the, in the next. Then in the previous surah also, Iqra in the beginning is Quran. Iqra is, recite what? Recite the Qur'an. And which Qur'an? The one that came down in Laylatul Qadr. That's the next surah. So they're connected in many, many ways. Another thing that's um, mentioned, كَمَا, كما أَنَّ السُّورَةُ الْعَلَقُ تَبْدَأْ بِقَوْلِهِ إِقْرَأْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ وَهُوَ يَقْرَأُ مَا أُنزِلَ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ فَكَأَنَّهُ إِكْرَامْ إِقْرَأْ Iqra ma anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr fa hiya munasibatun zahira. That's what I just said. That you know the first part of that surah is saying recite. This one says what to recite it, meaning the Quran itself. That is what you should be reciting. Another interesting correlation that's been made by some scholars, uh, and you'll find many of these, and actually some of them. I used to be skeptical about them, like numerology type stuff. I was very skeptical about it. Until I found a couple of narrations that are associated or attributed to Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. You know there's a whole discussion about when Laylatul Qadr is, right? And we all know it's one of the five odd nights. There, you know, that's the, at the very least every Muslim knows that much. So it's either the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or 29th, right? One alim, you know, uh, Al-Alusi rahimahullah commented, it's beautiful that Allah Azza wa Jal in this surah, which is the surah of Laylatul Qadr, it has five ayat, and there are only five possible days in which Laylatul Qadr falls, okay? Then some, you know, there are many opinions. There are about 40 different opinions about where Laylatul Qadr is, by the way. There are 40 different opinions. But instead of going through all of them, just some interesting things that Ibn Abbas had his theory. His theory according to one, there are two places. One place he says it's the 23rd. That's his ishtihad. Uh, another place he, he thinks, and later he formed this opinion later, his assumption was that it's the 27th. That was his opinion, Ibn Abbas among others. And there's, though all of these are opinions, none of these are like absolute evidences. The opinions that are the most in number are for the 27th. In the end though, that's not in and of itself evidence. But it's interesting that when Ibn Abbas was explaining his rationale to Umar, he was explaining why he thinks it's the 27th to Umar and he gives some interesting reasons, I want to share them with you or at least summarize. Laylatul Qadr, the words Laylatul Qadr are nine letters. Lam, Ya, Lam, Ta, Marbuta, Alif, Lam, Lam, Qaf, Dal, Ra. Nine letters. And the words Laylatul Qadr occur in this surah three times. It was nine times three. Twenty-seven. So it's numerology stuff. I don't, you know, we don't take it as Dalil. 
But it's interesting that he presented this rationale to Umar radiallahu anhu. Another thing he said is, this surah has 30 words in it. If the, the word count in the surah is 30 words. But the 27th word, 30, like 30 words, like 30 days in a month, right? The 27th word is hiya. Salamun hiya hatta matla'il. And this is also Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And others reiterated it after him. That it is, uh, it, hiya is referring to the night itself. It is peace until the break of dawn. It. Hiya. So he says the word hiya is the 27th word, which may also be a clue, Allahu A'lam, that it is the 27th night. But this, inshallah, our dars is not going to be about which night it is. I just wanted to share with you that there is, first of all, there's a variety of opinions, and then there's some really creative explanation of why it may be that it is the 27th. In either case, the safe position to have, Allahu Ta'ala A'lam, is that it falls in one of the odd nights, and we don't know which one. That's the, probably the safe position to have. And given, and this is my personal, uh, uh, for my own self, but I'm just sharing it with you. If you find it beneficial, take it. If not, then you know, consult a alim that knows better, inshallah ta'ala. My personal take on it is, nowadays there's so much disagreement in the ummah about when Ramadan begins. Right? Uh, like your masjid is doing it one day, the other one's doing it Tuesday, the other one's doing Thursday. The other one says, no, we're going to be really different. We'll start next week. It was crazy. Right? There's so much variation, so the safe thing to do is to take at least the last 11 nights very seriously. Right, to assume it might fall anywhere, you might have started on the wrong day, to take at least the last 11 nights, 10 nights, very very seriously in the month of Ramadan. And you know it's especially difficult, because in our culture, Ramadan starts, first 3-4 days, the masajid are full, then you get burnt out, then you're kind of seasonal. 20 days into it, you're really tired. When you're really tired is when you have to get, seek the real treasure, Laylatul Qadr, right? So people get really lazy, and what do they do? They take a vacation, show up on the 27th and go back home, right? That's in hopes that maybe that was it. Right? That's probably not a healthy attitude. We should, you know, save our energies, especially for the last 10, and not get burnt out. And you know, again, personal advice, this is not a fatwa or anything, personal advice to the Muslims in general, you know, instead of getting burnt out in Ramadan in the beginning, keep it moderate. Okay, you can't pray all, you know, 20. I encourage, you know, 8, 20, whatever your masjid is doing. Do as much as you can. But if you get tired early, then take a break. It's, it's not fard, it's okay. Take a break. It's better you stay consistent. Then you come for two days and then you forget the rest of the 28 days. You're, you're tired. Or you can't go, it's, it, you know, they recite too slowly. You know, a lot of people complain, they recite too slowly. Well, the Quran was meant to be recited slowly. If that's your problem, you've got serious problems, right? This is, you know, Qur'an is not meant to be just, you know, uh, uttered in hyper speed. You have no idea what's being recited, and you just got it over with. That's not what Qur'an came down for. And that's the last activity which will give you khushu in the salah. And the whole point of the salah is what? Remembering Allah. Aqim salata li dhikri, Allah says. Establish salah so you can remember me. How are you remembering Allah if you can't even keep up with the words? You can't even keep up, you don't even know what's being recited. How are, you, how are you remembering Allah? So we've lost the spirit of the prayer, and we're more concerned with the form of the prayer, and that's unfortunate. But that's, again, it's a side subject. Let's come to the surah itself, inshallah ta'ala, and finish as, as much as we possibly can. Inna anzalnahu. It is no doubt we that have sent it down. Anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. There are many things in this ayah that need attention. First is the word we. Allah uses we for Himself. A lot of people ask that question, how come Allah doesn't use I? Right? How come He doesn't use I? How come He uses we? This has come up before in our sessions, just a brief overview. First and foremost, the words, the pronouns that occur in the Qur'an for Allah are I, ana, we, nahnu, anta, in dua we say anta al-azizul hakim, anta al-alimul khabir, etc. Anta, you, huwa, meaning he. Four pronouns occur for Allah Azza wa Jal. Ana, nahnu, anta, and huwa. I, we, he, and you. These are the four pronouns that occur for Allah. Of them, only one is plural. Only one of these is plural, which is nahnu. All the others are singular. So the people who are confused that it's actually, literally plural, the first counter argument to that is, if it was actually plural, you wouldn't just find huwa, you would also find hum. You wouldn't just find he, you would also find they, that doesn't occur. You wouldn't just find anta, you would find antum, all of you, that doesn't occur. 
So the nahnu, even when it occurs for Allah Azza wa it's not literally we, because it's not given the same consideration in the second person or the third person. This only happens in the first person. This is the first thing to note. The second thing to note, that's often not noted, and I think this is kind of, actually that's fairly popular, is that the word nahnu it was used in Semitic languages and many other languages also as an illustration of power, royalty, and formality. Kings, they don't say, I am forgiving you. You know what they say? We're letting you go. We have decided. How many are you, dude? There's one guy, but he says what? We. It's a show of royalty, it's a show of power. He speaks of himself like he's more powerful than many. And this sort of rhetoric is used when a king speaks. In the Qur'an, when Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about doing something majestic, when he, when he talks about something that's royal, you know, when he provides his slaves water, when he gives them food, rizq, provision, when he takes care of their sustenance, when he creates, these are majestic powers of Allah, you usually find nahnu, we. Especially with water. Which is interesting because his arsh is above what? Water. It's, it's actually made above water. And so water is a symbol of Allah's kingship actually in the earth. So whenever Allah talks about sending water down, you find nahnu in the Qur'an, we. But, two instances for I in the Qur'an. Either Allah is extremely angry, extremely angry, you'll find ana. Or extremely merciful, you will also find ana I. So we say that nahnu is formal speech, while ana is informal. Ana is informal. Nahnu may be a declaration, like a majestic royal declaration, but ana is personalized, it's closer, and it has emotional charge in it like nothing else. I'll give you a couple of examples. You know tawbah? When Allah accepts tawbah, He doesn't just forgive your sins. What does He do? He takes your evil deeds and replaces them with good ones. This is the nature of tawbah. It's a very powerful act of Allah's mercy, and it's an extreme act of Allah's love. You find in the Qur'an, Atubu, I accept tawbah, I. Tawbah is extreme mercy, I. Not we, but I. When it comes to extreme punishments in the Qur'an, for example, when the followers of Isa alayhi salam asked him to spread, to send a table spread from the sky. Right? They asked him for a table spread from the sky. Isa alayhi salam's first response, Ittaqullah. Fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah, what are you asking for? And this is appropriate for Isa alayhi salam because he is the last of the messengers to Bani Israel and they've been asking for miracles for generations. And after seeing the most amazing things, they still don't have iman. Their hearts are still hard. So now you're still asking for a table spread, you're still asking for a miracle to see. Allah Azza wa Jal did say He's sending it down, but He sent a warning with it. And what's the warning? If anybody disbelieves after this, فَإِنِّي أُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا لَا أُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Then it is I who will torture him with a torture for sure, that I have never tortured anyone with. Very strong language, and the strength of the language becomes even tougher because of what word? I, instead of we. So there's a difference between how they're used in the Qur'an. But one last point that is not commonly noted and it's very important to note, it's beautiful about the Qur'an. People who get confused about the use of the word we in the Qur'an don't read Qur'an carefully enough. Whenever the word nahnu occurs for subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, right after or right before, either there's the word Allah or there's the word Rabb. Both what, what for version? Singular. So it's never confusing that is it really plural or is it one? Immediately the singular form is used. For example, even in this surah, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr, right? But then, as you go forward, you'll find the word Rabb. You'll find and we'll, we'll discover it, inshallah ta'ala, okay? There, so every time in proximity, either before or after, you find the word Rabb, you find the word Allah, singular, making it clear that it's actually not meant literally as a plural. Another thing that uh, uh, important to note about this surah, is, it, is this night powerful, Laylatul Qadr, we haven't even discussed what Qadr means yet, but is this night noble, blessed, because the Qur'an came down in it? Or is it already noble and then the Qur'an came down in it? So is it the nobility of this night, the majesty of this night, was it already there and then the Qur'an came? Or is it the fact that this night became noble because of the coming down of the Qur'an? Al-Sha'arawi rahimahullah, he puts it this way. 
أن ليلة القدر هي ليلة مميزة قبل نزول القرآن فيها قرآن فيها وشرفت أكثر بنزول القرآن. سبحان الله. This is very balanced statement. He says this night, this night was noble and majestic and and uh, dignified by Allah even before the Quran came down, and its dignity enhanced after the Quran was revealed in it. So it, it was already there, which is why the name is used Laylat al Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylat al Qadr, suggesting that the word the the name of it, the title of it, is already known with Allah. Even before the Qur'an was revealed, in another place in Surah Al-Dukhan, Laylatin Mubarakah, the blessed night, or a blessed night. Now, Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah is probably the most concise tafsir on Laylatul Qadr. I, I read like 20 of them, and there's a lot of overlap in the tafsir, and I found that Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah, his writing, basically covers everything you need to know. Instead of giving you 35 quotes of who said what, and who said what, and who said what, it's the most concise narration or the, the most concise uh, uh, writing on the subject so we'll just go through it bit by bit inshallah al-dhamir fi anzalnahu lil qur'an he says we sent it down anzalnahu who who referring the pronoun who referring to the qur'an now in language you don't use a pronoun unless the audience already knows what it's being used for for example if you your wife sends you to groceries she doesn't say make sure make sure you don't forget it Right? And what's the question you're going to ask? What is it? Is it the milk? Is it the diapers? Is it the seal? What is it? Unless the audience already understands what it is, you can't use the word it. Right? They have to understand it ahead of time. So there has to be mention. So, you, so she says to you, make sure not to forget the milk. And then 10 minutes, 5 minutes later she says, make sure you don't forget it. Now when she says it, what are you thinking about? The milk. It's already there in your mind, right? But the surah begins with a pronoun. We have sent it down. Instead of saying, Inna anzalna al-Qur'an. Instead of saying Qur'an, it just says it. Now there are several benefits of that. We'll uh, explore them in the words of uh, Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah directly. First of all, this uh, use of the word who, actually I took it out, so I'll just tell you verbatim. This use of the word who is used in Arabic, li sharaf, meaning, you, you, the knowledge of that, the fact that this is Qur'an itself is so embedded in your heart, it doesn't even have to be said. It doesn't even have to be spelled out. And this is only done in context where everybody knows what you're talking about, or that subject matter is so universal, so important, that its name doesn't even need to be mentioned for you to appreciate it. For example, and I'll give you a contemporary example to understand the point, you, you say in sports, I'm, I don't follow football at all, but you know, Dallas Cowboys or something, right? So if I say, man, they're gonna win the bowl this year. You don't even say Cowboys, you just say they're gonna win, win the Super Bowl. They are gonna win the Super Bowl. If anybody's obsessed with that team, what are they already gonna understand? That they refers to the Cowboys. This dialogue came down in a context where there were two reactions. Either the believers who were obsessed with Qur'an, or the disbelievers who they, uh, they absolutely hated the Qur'an. You didn't have a... Casual attitude, oh, interesting words, you didn't have that. You only have one of two reactions. Either people are dying for it, or they're willing to kill against it. They're two extreme reactions, but both sides know about it very, very well. So when Allah says, we sent it down, both the believer and the disbeliever are very clear what that it is, it is the Qur'an itself. We have sent it down. Now the other thing that should be mentioned in this and the previous surah is, it's a, it's a little bit of a departure from what we learned before. نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ This is the words of a noble messenger. Meaning Jibreel gives these words to you. But in these surahs, this one and the one before it, in Al-Alaq, Allah Azza wa Jalla makes sure you understand Jibreel alayhi salam is just a means of delivery. Whose actual words are these? Allah Himself. We actually have sent it down. Yes, Jibreel brings it down, but the source is ourselves. So Allah makes it a point subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the credit for the words Himself. This is the second critical point that we should note. Now, anzala, the word anzalnahu. In Arabic, for sending down, there are two words that occur in the Qur'an. Anzalna or anzala and nazzala. The infinitive form is inzal and tanzil. They're different words. Inna nahnu nazzalna alayk al-Qur'ana tanzila. That's a different word, nazzala. But here we don't find inna nazzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Here the words are inna 
anzalnahu fi lid. So there's a little bit of a difference between them. In common English translations, both of them get translated as we sent it down. We sent it down in Laylatul Qadr. Again, I'm not translating Laylatul Qadr yet. The, di- the difference is huge. The word anzala comes from af'ala or if'al in Arabic in, in morphology. And an act that rhymes with that pattern, it implies something that's done at one time. So if Allah says anzala, like inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr, we sent the whole Qur'an down. The whole thing at once. In Laylatul Qadr. But if Allah says nazalna, Nazala like fa'ala is something that takes place over time. It doesn't happen at once, it takes time. Like allama in Arabic to teach. Teaching doesn't happen once, does it? It takes time. The student needs time to absorb, the teacher needs time to teach. It's a process. It can take years. But as opposed to it, a'lama. As opposed to allama, a'lama. A'lama is to inform. Not to teach, but to inform. How long does it take to inform someone? Once you say it, it's done. You inform them. If you say the flight's at 8 o'clock, you're done. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to teach them anything, you just inform them. So it happens at once. So two different words for the Qur'an are used in a nutshell. One word that suggests the whole Qur'an came down at once. The other word that suggests that the Qur'an came down over time. And we know the Qur'an came to the Messenger wasallam over the course of 23 years. From his age of 40 to his age of 63, right? So when we understand that it came down over time, why use this word that suggests that it came down all at once? This has been understood pre- predominantly one way. There's a second opinion I'll share with you, but I'll share the predominant opinion with you that comes again from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. He says, and this is what Shawkani is paraphrasing, أَنزَلَ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ إِلَى سَمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ That Allah sent it down from Lawh al to this, the first he- heaven, also called Baytul Izza. Okay? He sent it down to the first heaven in Laylatul Qadr. The entire Qur'an came down from the seventh heaven to the first in Laylatul Qadr. From there, Jibreel alayhi salam would, would give it to the messenger on occasion. Somebody would ask a question, the answer is in the ayah. Some incident comes up, the answer lies in the ayat. Some issue arises, the answer lies in the ayat. Right? Some problem arises, the answer, the solution lies in the ayat. This, this explanation we find in Surah Al-Isra, the 17th surah. Allah Azza wa Jal, in that surah He says, you know, uh, وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثٍ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And this uh, recital that we have split up. We've split it up, meaning over time. We didn't send it all at once, we split it up over time. So you may recite it onto the people on occasion. Meaning when the appropriate occasion arises, then you recite those ayat. You know, think about it. Abasa wa tawalla. If those ayat, there's an incident, then the ayat come, right? Then the ayat come. Similarly, أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يَنْهَا عَبْدًا إِذَا صَلَّى Do you see the one who forbids a slave from praying? If first that incident happens, then the, then the ayat come down. So عَلَى مُكْثْ On occasion. وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِلًا The other word. The other side of the word. And we sent it down gradually over time. The complaint of the kuffar was, how come it doesn't come down jumlatan wahida? How come all, the whole thing doesn't come down at once? You see, when it can't, if it comes down at once, then like, you know, somebody hands you the Qur'an, a Muslim takes shahada, they hand him the whole copy of the Qur'an, read this translation. What happens to the, the new Muslim? They get overwhelmed. What do they need more than that? One lesson at a time? One thing at a time? Take your time with them, don't overwhelm them? How did Allah teach his sahaba, the, the sahaba of the Messenger? How did Allah teach his Messenger himself? How many years did it take to learn the Qur'an? On occasion, 23 years. The occasion is coming, the ayat, the lessons are coming. And they're being internalized little by little by little. So we learn from that, Qur'an is a long-term study. Even for ourselves, that's even part of the sunnah now. The Qur'an is not something you can just casually just read through it like you read a newspaper, or you finish a textbook, I read the Qur'an. You can't do that with the Qur'an. It takes time to internalize. It's something deep, it requires deep study, right? So this, the word anzalna for the first heaven. And from there, down to the, the Messenger وسلم, over the next 23 years. Now, the other thing, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن أنزل, same word. Month of Ramadan in which we sent the entire Qur'an down. How we do want the word entire Qur'an is meant? Even though kamila is not used, because unzila is used. So, شهر رمضان, that's referring to Laylatul Qadr, it, in it the entire Qur'an was sent down. Now we talk a little bit about, this is a very beautiful topic. What's this Laylatul Qadr? What is Qadr? You know, Layla, okay, night. Night. 
But what is Qadr? Commonly, Qadr is translated as the night of power. The night of power. And most of the time, in an English translation, it's not fully appreciated what exactly does it mean that Allah calls it Laylatul Qadr. We'll read some of the scholarly commentary on this, which is actually, I found it extremely beautiful. قِيلَ سُمِّيَتْ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ يُقَدِّرُ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ إِلَى السَّنَةِ إِلَى السَّنَةِ الْقَابِلَةِ The first thing, this is found in a hadith, this is found in many athar of the sahaba. The gist of it is, it is called Laylatul Qadr because the word Qadr means estimation, determination also. Determination. Allah Azza wa Jalla Himself, you know He is, وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Qadir, same root, same root. Allah has estimate and control over everything. But you know how there's a, a 30 year plan or a million year plan, but then there's a year's budget, right? Or the actions that need to be taken for that year. Allah knows everything already, but He lets His angels know of what the plan is for this year. What is, what is Allah decreed for the people for this year? He informs the angels of that in this night. So for that year, the, basically the execution of Allah's plan is dedicated or, or is delivered to the angels in Laylatul Qadr. That's the first thing for that next year. وَقِيلَ إِنَّهَا سُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكْ لِعَظِيمِ قَدْرِهَا وَشَرْفِهَا This is the other thing. Qadr not just means estimation, calculation, precision. It also means honor, nobility, dignity. So it's called the night of great dignity and nobility also because of its great nobility. Then, كذا and Zahri calls it that too. وقيل سميت بذلك لأن للطاعات فيها قدر عظيم. This is beautiful, and it's called the night of appreciation. Qadr is also to appreciate, and it says that the Mufassirun say it's called this night because in this night when people obey Allah, Allah really appreciates it. That the, this is the night of Allah appreciating the worship of and the ibadah of His slave. And obviously, so appreciated it is that He counts this one night's worship as how many? A thousand months, right? So a thousand, alf is khayrun min alf, better more than a thousand months. So it's not even, it is a thousand months, it is better than a thousand months. So He went even further than a thousand months, subhanAllah. Then finally, وَقِيلَ الْخَلِيلِ سُمِّيَتْ لَيْلَهُ الْقَدْرِ لِأَنَّ الْأَرْضِ تَضِيقُ فِيهَا بِالْمَلَائِكَةِ The word Qadr in Arabic has one more meaning that's also used in the Qur'an, and that is constriction, congestion, to be stuck in something. So Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, in Surah Al-Talaq, He says, وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ Whoever his provision became tight on him, meaning their budget became tight, right? We also read in Juz Amma before, وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ Right? Uh, whoever we test and we take his risk and we make it tight. Their budget becomes constrained. They don't have as loose an opportunity to spend cash anymore. It becomes restrictive on them. So this tightness, liq, is also part of the meaning of qadr. And it's called that also, that meaning is injected in it also, because so many angels descend on the earth that the space becomes tight. SubhanAllah. All of these meanings of the nobility of the night, the decree of the night, also qadr means power also. So the power of the night, then the tightness because of the descent of all those angels, all of these meanings are embedded in one word. Now if you take any of these, any alternatives of Qadr, if you say Laylat al-Sharf, the night of nobility, then all the other meanings are gone. If you say the night of you know, power, then all the other meanings are gone. But Allah Azza wa Jal picked the perfect word which captures all these beautiful implications all at the same time without compromising the integrity of, of uh, the meaning, subhanAllah. So Al-Biqa'i uh, rahimahullah, he says, again, just commenting again on the who, he says, it is an indication that the love of the Qur'an and the recognition of the Qur'an lies in every heart. That's why it is enough to say. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Another interesting comment about مَا أَدْرَاكَ the, the Amazing language. If, if we just get to finish مَا أَدْرَاكَ I think I'll be happy for this evening inshaAllah ta'ala. First of all, مَا in Arabic is used uh, for many purposes. One of them is التعجب. To give you a sense of awe, okay, to, to make you, uh, to, to surprise you even. One of the, I think, to give you a sense of how this should be translated, what in the world could possibly make you realize? What in the world could possibly give you a clue what Laylatul Qadr really is? What it really is? Now, the question, it's different from saying when it is. See, all of our discussion has become what about Laylatul Qadr? When is it? But what's the question Allah is highlighting? Not when is it, but 
What is it? What, what, do you realize what amazing thing this is? What you have before? He says, مَالَ التَّعَجُّبْ This is one. The tafkhim also, to, to, to give it gravity. To you understand this is a very strong subject, very heavy thing. The other thing is there are two styles. Uslubain fi kitabillah. Allah says, مَا يُدْرِيكَ What will tell you? مَا أَدْرَاكَ What would have told you? So sometimes he uses the past tense, sometimes he uses the future tense. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ what, what, will, what will give you a clue? Right? Maybe he wants to cleanse himself. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَ Right? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَ And the Mufassirun are pretty much in agreement about this. Whenever Allah uses the present future tense, what will give you a clue? SubhanAllah, Allah does not give the answer. This is something only Allah knows. And when Allah says مَا أَدْرَاكَ The past tense, then Allah usually gives the answer. So the messenger is told, مَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What would ever tell you what Laylatul Qadr is? The past tense is used. What does that indicate? The messenger is given the answer, sallallahu alayhi wa And we learned this in several narrations, in which, you know, you know the famous narration about the, the Sahaba that got into a quarrel, and the messenger knew and he forgot by the decree of Allah, but Allah did inform him. But it's not even the, that's not even the real issue. Because even that was not what the night is, but what? When the night is. Here the appreciation is what the night is. And so, to give us a clue of what makes this night so incredible, the rest of the surah actually answers this question. Doesn't it? Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahar tanazulul malaika. So the entire definition of what Laylatul Qadr actually is, has been given. So that's again in sequence with what Allah Azza wa Jalla says. The other thing I want you to know, because Qur'an is revealed in this night, this is something very special. And Allah gives it a special uslub, a special form of speech that has not been used anywhere else in the Qur'an. We say, عِنْدَنَا قَاعِدَةً الْإِسْمُ الظَّاهِرْ أَقْوَى وَآكَدْ مِنَ الضَّمِيرِ There's a principle in Arabic that, you know, using a noun is more powerful than just alluding to it or using a pronoun instead of it. If you actually spell it out, that's more powerful. Okay? So, in, rhetorically speaking, if I say, you know, Abdul Karim is here, that's more noble than just saying he is here. Okay, that's just saying he is here. Now, we find in the Quran, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا هِيَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقَ You heard these before? Many places Allah says, مَا أَدْرَاكَ But when he says them, the next ayah, نَارٌ حَامِيَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا هِيَ نَارٌ حَامِيَ it doesn't say hiya narun hamia. It doesn't repeat the whole thing. So the way to put it in English, what will give what would have given you a clue what it is? A fire. The second sentence just says a fire. But it doesn't say it is a fire. That it is part, not mentioned. Second time. Wama adrakam al hutama. What will give you an idea what hutama is? Now the next ayah doesn't say al hutama tu narullah il muqada. Hutama happens to be the fire of Allah kindled. No. Hutama is not repeated. So the question is, what will, what will give you a clue what hutama is? The fire of Allah. The second part, the response, isn't a complete sentence, it's just the predicate of the, the sentence. وَمَا أَضْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقُ What will give you a clue what, what is? الطَّارِقُ The next sentence isn't الطَّارِقُ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبُ Tariq happens to be the brilliant star. That's not what's said. Just النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبُ What was not repeated? الطَّارِقُ It doesn't get repeated. But now comes to this surah. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ The next ayah doesn't just say خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الْفِشَارِ What does it say? لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الْفِشَارِ This is the only place in the Qur'an where the part of the question is repeated again. Giving this an emphasis over all the other places where such style is used. Because what is being highlighted here? The other places are the importance of a tariq a creation of Allah, the importance of hutama, the fire, hellfire, twice. These are magnificent creations by the way. But none of this compares to what? The word, the night in which the Qur'an was revealed. So it's given a special uslub. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Again. How many times does Laylatul Qadr occur in this surah? Three times. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Then again, لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ Now, in Lata'if al-Isharat, this is actually something really beautiful Al-Fushayri rahimahullah wrote in the 4th century. I want to share the quote with you. فِي لَيْلَةٍ قَدَّرَ فِيهَا الرَّحْمَةِ لِأَوْلِيَائِهِ First of all, it is a beautiful night in which 
Allah decreed mercy for his close friends. May Allah make us from them. يَجِدُ فِيهَا الْعَابِدُونَ قَدْرَ نُفُوسِهِمْ The worshippers of Allah realize the worth of their own selves in this night. Qadr again, the qadr of their own selves, meaning the appreciation of their own selves. What that means is, the people who take advantage of this, this night, they realize what they are worth to Allah. Because if you're not worth anything to Allah, you'll sleep through it. <laughs> you won't take any advantage of it. Okay, so the, the ones who really appreciate Allah, find what they are worth to Allah in this night. Qadr nufusihim. وَيَشْهَدُ فِيهَا الْعَارِفُونَ قَدْرَ مَعْبُودِهِمْ And those who really seek to recognize Allah, they appreciate the one that they're worshipping in this night. They really find an appreciation of Allah like no other night in this night. One of the mercies that Alusi rahimahullah mentioned for us not knowing for sure which night it is. You know, there, there are many benefits to that actually. One of them you may have heard, one is laziness of course, take all 29 days of Ramadan off, show up for Laylatul Qadr. That would have happened. That's one possibility, right? That fitna would have been created. But another benefit, actually uh, we, we learned from a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, I'll paraphrase for you, he's traveling, he's going with Ali radiallahu anhu. And there's a Bedouin sleeping in the masjid. And it's time for salah. So he tells Ali radiallahu anhu, go wake him up. Go wake him up. So he goes and wakes him up for salah. Then Ali radiallahu anhu says, this is a good deed. Why did he not do it himself? You know, the messenger is the first to engage in a good deed. So why would he tell me to do it? Why not do it himself? So he asked the messenger, why did you not take advantage of this opportunity? Why did you send me? He said, well, if I tried to wake him up, and he brushed me aside, and he didn't listen, then he would have been in deep sin. But if you do it, then that's okay. You understand? So the fact that the messenger sent Ali radiallahu anhu was an act of mercy towards the guy who was sleeping. Because by if the messenger is waking you up, man. <laughs> That's no joke. And you, you know, I don't, I'm sleepy right now. You don't even realize who you're talking to. What kind of trouble you land yourself into, right? So, Alusi rahimahullah comments, the fact that we don't know what Laylatul Qadr is, perhaps one of the gifts of that is, the one who even after knowing it, still doesn't appreciate it, what kind of trouble would they be in? What kind of hole would they be in? That after you knew what the worth of this night is, you still kick it to the side. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us find Laylatul Qadr every single Ramadan. Okay. Well, one last ayah inshaAllah ta'ala and we will uh, take a break for the salah. The salah is 8.45 still? Okay. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. قَالَ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ أَيْ الْعَمَلْ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْعَمَلْ فِي أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ لَيْسَ فِيهَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَاخْتَارَ هَذَا الْفَرَّاءِ وَالزُّجَاجِ وَغَيْرُهُمْ they say, the Mufassirun say that the, when Allah says the Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand nights, it means the good you can, the, the deeds you do in this night are worth more than the deeds you would perform in a thousand months, in a thousand, which is about 83 years or so. Okay? Now the thing is, I was just for my own curiosity. Yeah. Okay. For my own curiosity, I, was, I actually tried to look up the average lifespan. Just thinking, you know, Allah offers us 83 months of bonus. The average lifespan in the United States for women at its peak is 80, and at its peak for men is 74. Okay? So Allah goes beyond our average lifespan to offer us one night where we can take, take control and actually earn good for an entire lifespan in that month. It's a very powerful thing that Allah Azza wa Jal offered to us. You know, in much of the Muslim world, some places, the average lifespan is 40. The average lifespan is 30. Some places, even starving nations, 33. The lifespan is very, very short. For those places, Allah is offering them twice their, twice their lifespan per year of good deeds. What a mercy. Well, what, you know, the, the surah began, what will give you a clue what Laylatul Qadr is? Something we could never even have earned. And this is where we find the hadith of the, or the narration that's attributed to the Prophet ﷺ. رأى أعمار أمته قصيرة. He saw that the age of the members of his ummah is short. فخاف أن لا يبلغ من العمل مثل مثل ما بلغ غيرهم غيرهم في طول العمر. He's Umar actually. He says the messenger was afraid that his ummah's members are going to have short lives. Short lives. They're going to not live that long. So he was afraid that the people who came before had much longer lives, and so they got a chance to earn even much more good deeds. So he had that fear, so Allah as a gift gives to him, Laylatul Qadr. So they can catch up, the members of his ummah can catch up 
and be actually even ahead of all of the other nations because imagine if one takes advantage of Laylatul Qadr every single year let's just say for 10 years right for 10 years that's a good millennium <laughs> that you've got for you in your favor may Allah Azza wa Jal make us appreciate what this night is then others say this khair khairu min alfi shahar is that the go- you can do uh, more good, you can accomplish more good in this night than you would be able to in others, not just in terms of ibadah, but in reconciliation. Meaning the barakah of your deeds in this night is unlike any other. So a lot of ulama based on that said, if you have fa- problems with your family, if you've been fighting with your wife, if you haven't talked to your brother in 10 years, when should you call them? When should you make it up? When should you say, oh he's gonna yell at me and hang up on me? No, take your chances which night? On Laylatul Qadr. You know, bury the hatchet, move on, reconcile family ties. The, the good that will come out of this night is unlike any other night. So take advantage of that. Because Allah does use the word khair. Khairun min alfi shahr. Then he didn't even say ka alfi shahr. It is like a thousand ones. He said it's better. It's better. So what that tells us, and this is a, a, a few statements of the Arabs. I should have stated, uh, stated all of you. وَقِيلْ أَرَادَ بِقَوْلِهِ أَلْفَ شَهْر جَمِيعُ الدَّهْرِ and it's said also among Mufassirun that by Allah saying a thousand months, He means all time. لِأَنَّ الْعَرَبِ تَذْكُرُ أَلْفَ شَهْرٍ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ عَلَى طَرِيقِ الْمُبَالَغَةِ The Arabs used to mention a thousand months in a lot of their statements as a means of hyperbole, meaning for all time. Like I say, they'll say to somebody, I'm going to be your friend for a thousand months. That doesn't mean that at the end of a thousand months, I'm no longer your friend. What that means, you know, in English literature we say, I'm going to be your buddy forever and ever and ever. <laughs> That sort of talk, hyperbolized talk, their expression was a thousand months. So Allah, by using that expression, yes, we, some ulama did make the calculation of how many days it comes out to, and how many salawat, and all of that. That may be true, but in addition, it actually has this infinity kind of context in it, or, or the power in it. Because of the word khair, and also because alf shahr is used as an expression among the Arabs. Alright, so that was, inshallah ta'ala, just a little bit about we have five more minutes, so I'm going to take those five minutes. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ This is the heaviest ayah of the surah. It has a lot of beautiful subtleties in it. We'll take one bit by bit by bit. One of the things that I want to help you appreciate about this ayah before the tafsir of it is the literary marvel in it. The Qur'an, we always say, is precise speech. It's precise speech. And what I want to illustrate to you today is Qur'an is so precise that it's precise down to the way a word is spelled. Down to the way a word is spelled, it's precise. And that's something humanly not capable for us. What do I mean by that? I'll, I'll, I hope I can get that across to you in the next five or so minutes, okay? In English, have you ever heard the word um, demo? Demo? What's the full version? Demonstration, right? Demonstration. Similarly, if I say math, math, what's the full version? Mathematics, right? Bio, biology, that sort of thing. Now, sometimes you use the short version and sometimes you use the long version. But everybody who speaks a language knows they mean one and the same thing. I'm studying math, I'm studying mathematics, same thing. Okay? I saw the demo, I saw the demonstration, same thing. Okay? The Arabic, sort of like this, a parallel, it's not same, exactly the same thing, but there's a parallel to it. In Arabic, there's a way you can spell a word in its full form and also in its partial form, okay? There are many ways to do that. One of those ways is what's called al-idgham fissar. What I'm get, trying to get at is, in Arabic there's a word, tatanazzalu. Tatanazzalu. That's the actual word. How many ta's did you hear? Tatanazzalu. Two. You can actually, you have the leisure in Arabic to drop one of those ta's, because it's redundant, and you can just say what instead? Tanazzalu. You can just say tanazzalu. Both of them mean the same thing. The only difference is, one is the brief version, one is the full version. Similarly, tafarraku, tatafarraku, tadakkaru, tatadakkaru. Other, me- other words like that. Yatadabbaruna, yaddabbaruna. You take one syllable out, and you're allowed to do that, the meaning doesn't change. The meaning doesn't change. But in the Qur'an, it's remarkable, even though the meaning doesn't change, the Arabic re- rhetoricians, the old, in old Arabic, the more you use a word, or the more spelled out the word is, it alludes to more in meaning. There's something more about this spelling than the lesser spelling. What I'm trying to get at is the ayah says, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تَنَزَّلُ How many ta's did you hear? One ta. Let me take you another ayah. This is Hamim uh, al-Sajda. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا 
تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ How many ta's did you hear this time? Two ta's. In one place, same thing, angels are coming down here, angels are coming down there. But here he says, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ There he said, تَتَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ A little bit more. Now rhetorically speaking, the ulama, like a, you know, a, a Sha'arawi rahimahullah, Fadl Salih al Ra'i and others, they comment, when you add the ta, when you keep the full spelling, there's something more about this context than the other. Now, let me tell you about Hamim Sayyidah where the two ta's occur. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ This is the ayah talking about angels descending at the time of death. The angels descend at the time of death. How often do they descend then? How often does that happen? Every day, every minute virtually, angels are descending at the time of death. Is there more occurrence of that? Sure. The ayah we're about to read, angels come down also, but when do they come down? Laylatul Qadr. Is that happening every night? How often is it happening? Is it happening more or less than the other ayah? It's happening way less. What's happening in Laylatul Qadr by comparison is much less than what's happening in the ayah in Hamim al Sajda. That is the place to mention more. So more is used in the spelling. This is the context of less by comparison. So the lesser spelling form is used. Now think about that. I mean, I know this is a, a nuanced kind of a discussion, but think about that. The Messenger ﷺ didn't read the Qur'an to the people, he recited it. To the disbeliever, this was just speech, this wasn't writing. Can you be conscious of what you said years ago, or what you're going to say years later, compared to that, maybe I should use one less ta here, and one more ta there, because it'll fit better? You think that's even possible for us? Subhanallah. Just that ta, one ta in the ayah, in and of itself is a miracle. In and of itself shows the precision and marvel of the Qur'an. And this occurs all over the Qur'an. The difference between tadhakkaru and tatadhakkaru. Tatafarraku and tafarraku. These subtle differences are actually big big things in how we appreciate the subtlety of the text. We'll just go to the translation and end inshallah ta'ala and continue after the Isha prayer as I was told. تَنَزَّلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ Angels and a ruh which by ijma' is Jibreel alayhi salam, descend in it by the permission of their master, their lord, it, uh, as a result or because of every single affair. I'm translating min as harf ajal as many mufassirun have commented. We'll talk more about this ayah. This is the fourth and second last ayah of the surah after the salah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaykum. Assalamu alaykum. To download more lectures, learn more about our project, and to help support it, visit www.bayyina.com slash dream. That's B-A-Y-Y-I-N-A-H slash dream. You are free to share these recordings with family and friends. Thank you and Jazakumullah Khairan for helping us make our dream a reality. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ونسلم بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We're studying the fourth ayah of Surah Al-Qadr. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر. We talked a little bit about the word تنزل. We'll look at one more comment by Al-Biqai رحمه الله about that word. He says تنزل أي تنزلا متدرجا هو أصلا على غاية ما يكون من الخفة والسرعة بما أشار إليه حذف التاء. What that essentially means is in simple English. The lack, the missing ta. Remember I told you it could be two ta's, but Allah only uses one. As opposed to the ayah in uh, Surah Hamim Masajda or Surah Fusilat. That one ta indicates that the angels come down very, very fast. So the word is pronounced quicker. And so the action is given a speedy 
connotation also. This is part of the rhetoric of the Arabic language. So in the angels, the, the, so the, by the word tanazzalu in the ayah as opposed to tatanazzalu, we learn that the angels come down secretly and very, very quickly in this night. Then an interesting nuance in the language. And this is something that again, uh, a casual reading of the Qur'an you won't notice. But a careful reading of the Qur'an as some of our great ulama have done, you know, they pick up on these things. In the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Al-Mala'ika wa ruh The angels and Ar-Ruh Ar-Ruh referring to, like we said before, Jibreel alayhi salam This occurs in a number of places تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ Surah Al-Ma'arij, he says تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ إِلَيْهِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ So this idea of Mala'ika and Ruh, Mala'ika and Ruh but there's one place in the Qur'an, in Surah An-Naba, he reverses the sequence. He says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ So usually he says, مَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ But in one place he says, instead of the angels and the ruh, or Jibreel, he says, Jibreel and the angels. So he switches the order. This sequencing in the Qur'an is also very subtle and something very beautiful about the Qur'an. We learn, you know, from the way verbs are used with the angels, a lot of verbs that are used with the angels are associated with movement. So for example, وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ When we send the angels down, this is also movement. أَنْ يُمِدُّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِخَمْثِ أَنْ يُمِدَّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِثَلَاثَةِ آلَافٍ مِّنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُنْزَلِينَ That angels would be coming down. Allah says, هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظُلَلٍ مِّنَ الْغَمَامِ وَالْمَلَائِكَ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ uh, are they waiting till the time when Allah Himself descends from the clouds and the angels descend? Verbs that are used for angels or in the context of angels in the Qur'an, they're usually ver- verbs of movement. Movement. Some action is taking place. But when we find this discussion about Jibreel alayhi salam, we find interesting language that's to the contrary. We find, for example, uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla says about him, عند ذي العرش مكين Stationed. Stationed. Now in these ayat, the, the one we're reading, تَنَزَّلُوا Coming down. Is that movement? This is movement. In Surah Al-Ma'arish, تَعْرُجُوا They rise up. They fly up. That's also movement. But in Surah Al-Naba, we read, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَ The day on which a ruh and malaika stand still. Is that movement or not? That's not movement. It's standing still. And that, what's more associated with the stillness? Or the stationary is Jibreel alayhi salam because he's got that station under the arsh, right? So when that stationary word is used, Jibreel alayhi salam is mentioned first. When movement is mentioned, the angels are mentioned first. It's part of the subtlety and beauty of the Quran. So here we find تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا in it the angels and a ruh Jibreel alayhi salam descend, and this is again something of the honor of this night. Who brings the Quran down? It's Jibreel alayhi salam. It's Jibreel alayhi salam, and in this night. That angel that was responsible for delivering revelation, he himself also comes down. That's a big deal. That, that every, every single year, Jibreel alayhi salam repeats his sunnah, which started with him coming down for the revelation of the Qur'an itself. So that's in and of itself is what gives this night an enormous uh, honor. Let's talk a little bit now about the next part, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ So the angels come down, we talked about the word coming down, the, the, the sequence of angels and the ruh, in this night, but now be idni rabbihim. The literal translation of which is by permission of their master. They come down by the permission of their lord, their master. We'll read a Shawkani rahimahullah, amazing commentary on it. And also, actually, what I'll read to you first is uh, from Dr. Samir Ra'i rahimahullah, or Jazakallah khair. Qila al malaika yashtaqoon li ru'yat al mu'minin fi al ard. It is said that the angels are looking forward desperately to see the believers on the earth. فَيَسْتَأْذِنُونَ رَبَّهُمْ فِي هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ So they seek permission of their Lord in this night. لِيُسَلِّمُوا عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So they may say salam to the believers. يَسْتَأْذِنُونَهُ فَيُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ They seek His permission, and permission is given to them. So what does the ayah say? By the permission of their Lord. What's the, what are they asking permission for? To meet and greet the believers who are worshipping Allah on the earth. Those that whom Allah has given an opportunity to worship Him that would count for a thousand months. Who are these people? And the angels are like desperately wanting to meet and honor these people. You know how you uh, get like an all access pass to meet a celebrity? <laughs> right? Or you get to see the president at the press conference or something. Or you have, you've been invited by the dean of the college or whatever. The angels 
hold the believers in this high regard that they ask Allah's permission to come and see them, to come and send salams upon them. And that's where we find at the end of the surah, what? Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. That's one of the meanings of that salam, that the angels come and descend salam and peace upon the believers. Subhanallah. So, ma عَظْمَةُ هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ يَسْتَأْذِنُونَ رَبَّهُمْ لِزِيَارَةِ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَيُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ فَيَنْتَزِلُونَ So subhanAllah, when the permission is given to them, they descend rapidly and quickly to bring that salams to them. So this was the next part, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ Now we come to the last part of the ayah, مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ مِنْ تُفِيدُ التَّعْلِيلِ أَحْيَانًا كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ مِمَّا خَطِئَاتِهِمْ أُغْرِقُوا In Surah Al-Nuh, Allah says, مِنْ مِمَّا خَطِئَاتِهِمْ Because of their, because of their mistakes, they were drowned. The people of Nuh, He says, مِمَّا خَطِئَاتِهِمْ Because of their mistakes, they were drowned. مِنْ in Arabic is commonly translated as from in English. Right? مِنْ you know, مِنْ أَيْنَا أَنْتَ Where are you from? Right? So مِنْ is translated as from. But in classical Arabic, it has multiple usages. One of, it, one of them is, min is harf ajal. What that means is, instead of from, the transition becomes because of. So min kulli amr here, if you look at it as harf ajal, what the meaning becomes is, because of every single command. Because of every single command that Allah has issued to them for that year, to initiate that process, they descend on that day. And also min kulli amr implies, from, because of all sorts of commands. And this is explained in the beginning of Surah Al-Dukhan. In Surah Al-Dukhan, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُوا كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حكيم. On that day, meaning on Laylatul Qadr, also mentioned in Surah Al-Dukhan, there it's not called Laylatul Qadr, there it's called Laylatul Mubarakah, the bl- a blessed night. Okay? There Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the angels descend, and they have been given responsibility, divided up all sorts of wise decisions that Allah Himself has given to them. And you know, whenever Allah mentions angels coming down with the command of Allah, He makes sure we understand where did the command come from? From Allah Himself. So, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ Their amram min indina, A command that's come especially from us. Why mention Himself especially? I know we understand the commands are from Allah and the angels come to execute them. We understand that. But why specifically mention Allah? Because on the earth, a lot of religions, a lot of religions are based on shirk First with the angels. Look at Catholicism for example. They call on certain angels. They call on certain, instead of worshipping Allah, they worship and call on for help, they call on certain angels. A lot of the pagan traditions, you know, they started, they, they took the true beliefs that Allah Azza wa Jal, you know Allah Azza wa Jal has for example, the angel assigned for mountains. That, that angel came to Rasulullah wasallam on the occasion of Taif. Right, he came, but the power to move the mountains comes from the angel or comes from Allah? Comes from Allah. But when shirk occurs, what do people do? The god of mountains, and the god of this, and the god of that. Originally it was the angel, and they, the, the understanding wasn't clear that the power actually comes from Allah. And what did people start doing? Giving credit to the angels themselves for having such powers. But no, the power itself comes from Allah. So whenever Allah talks about the descent of angels for anything, He makes sure you, you understand the actual blessing isn't the angel, the actual blessing is Allah Azza wa Jal here also bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr by the permission of their master, subhanAllah. So min kulli amr ay al-umur al-kulliya allati yafraquna biha bi-idhni Allah tafasil al-umur allati yuriduha subhanahu wa ta'ala fi thalika al-aam fi awqatiha min dhilka al-layla ila mithliha min al-aam al-muqbil. What this simply means is, and this is again the commentary of Biqa'i rahimahullah, the angels come with all the commands that Allah has issued them for them to be executed from this night to the repetition of this night the next year. Those, the commandments that are going to take place in, uh, from this to the next night, next year, subhanAllah. Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. Some have taken salam to be part of the previous sentence. Min kulli amrin salam. In every single decision Allah makes on that night, there is peace. And every single decision that's executed, there is peace and solitude. But the, here are the opinions of the ulama as far as uh, this word is used. قَدْ تَمَّ الْكَلَامِ عِنْدَ قَوْلِهِ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ ثُمَّ ابْتَدَأَ فَقَالْ سَلَامٌ هِيَا أَيْ مَا هِيَا إِلَّا سَلَامَةٌ وَخَيْرٌ كُلُّهَا لَا شَرَّ فِيهَا What he's saying is, on this night there's absolutely no evil whatsoever. When Allah Azza wa Jal send the angels down on this night, in every single thing they do, there is only peace. In other nights there is peace also, but there's peace and also there's what? You know, violence and other things happen, punishments can come too. But not on this night, this night is entirely peace. This time, this time is entirely peace. 
The way it's salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr, let's roughly translate it before we go into the interpretations. It is peace, peace it is. Peace it is, is probably closer translation. Until the break of dawn, the break of fajr. Now, the first interpretation we're going to look at is hiya dhatu salamatin min an yu'tharu fiha shaitan min mu'min, fi mu'minin aw mu'mina. This is a night of absolute peace in which there is no. Uh, Intervention of the shayateen. This opinion of the ulama has been considered weak by others because we know in the month of Ramadan who's already chained anyway. The shayateen are chained anyway. So that's sort of a redundant uh, statement. Mujahid rahimahullah says that this, this is a night in which no, even no human being can uh, truly uh, embark on any evil task. Then others say, a shabi says for example, huwa taslimul malaika ala ahlil masajid. May Allah make us from them. Allah calls it salam because it's the, the night in which the angels are constantly saying salam to the people of the masajid, the people who spend their night in the masajid. This is the opinion of al-Shabi rahimahullah. Hina taghib al-shams ila an yutla al-fajr. Until from the setting of the sun until the break of dawn. They yamiruna ala kulli mu'minin wa yaquluna salam alayk ayyuhal mu'min. They pass by every single mu'min and they say to him, may peace be upon you, O believer. You know, in the long narration that's, that's uh, captured in, in the Ibn Kathir, we're not going to go into the narrations of the blessings of Laylatul Qadr. But just to paraphrase, you should read, read up on it yourselves. This entire battalion of angels, Jibreel alayhi salam descends and then they, they, and all of them descend at one time and they go into every single masjid, go into every single believer, and they go and send salam upon them and they make dua for them. It's an amazing, amazing hadith. That long journey these angels take for what purpose in the end? To send salam upon the believers. SubhanAllah. It's such an honor that Allah gives to the believers on this night. I'm going to take the position of Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah when it comes to just commenting on uh, those narrations. Wal-ahadith fi fadli laylatul qadr kathira. The ahadith that talk about the blessings of laylatul qadr are many. Wa laysa hadha mawdi'u basliha. Wa kathalik al-ahadith fi ta'yiniha wal ikhtilaf fi thalik. And just similarly, there are many narrations in where it's actually placed. And, and, and what night it's actually considered Laylatul Qadr and the differences of opinion among them. This is really not the place to discuss those. But I do want to show you how, the, how beautifully the surah is tied together. The surah began with the descent of the Qur'an. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Then the angels descend. Then peace descends. Three things descend in this surah. The, angel, the Qur'an itself, the angels, and then peace. Until the time of Fajr. Now what's the best time to recite Qur'an? Which time of the recitation of Qur'an is actually a witness for us? Allah mentions Fajr at the end, right? Allah says in Surah Al-Isra, He says, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ وَإِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُدًا Allah, that, uh, he says, establish the prayer morning and night, and especially Qur'an of the Fajr. He didn't even call it prayer of Fajr. What did he call it? Qur'an of Fajr. No doubt the Qur'an of Fajr of that time is going to be a witness for you. It began with Qur'an, we sent it down. And it ends with a time in which when you recite Qur'an, it is a witness for you. Subhanallah. Salamun hiya hatta matla'i al-fajr. Rhetorically beautiful. The, the choice of words in the surah, and how the surah, and very few ayat is laid out. Now, inshallah ta'ala, the last comments about this uh, descent. And one of the things, what this has to do with the da'wah of the Qur'an. This is by majority opinion, almost consensus, this is a Makki surah. It's a Makki surah. And you know when you read about the fada'il and the benefits and the, the, good, the virtues of a night of worship, these virtues are usually talked about and learned by believers. Who doesn't benefit from any of this? Disbelievers. They have no value for what Laylatul Qadr is. They have no appreciation for it. They're not going to go and ask the messenger, tell me more about Laylatul Qadr. Right? They're not going to tell. Who is learning these things? Believers. But in the Meccan context, who is the primary audience? Is the primary audience, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, believers, or are they disbelievers? They're disbelievers. So it's interesting that it's a Makki surah, where the audience isn't interested in hearing what this is, and yet this remarkable ayat, or remarkable ayat, that you would think pertain predominantly not to disbelievers, but to Believers have come down, we have to fix this paradox or at least understand some things about it, inshaAllah ta'ala. This has to do with a subject that has come up many times before in our discussion, and that is the integrity of the Qur'an. In the previous surah, the messenger is being attacked, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the ignorant, Abu Jahl. If he doesn't stop, Allah has threatened him. 
Allah has told him not to be distracted by his insults, by his attacks. You know, in da'wah, da'wah is kind of like sales. Sales. You're trying to give somebody a message, and you're trying to hope that they accept it. Just like you're trying to give somebody a product, hoping they will buy it. Kind of like that. Not exactly, but kind of. But in sales, who's in a position of power? The salesman or the customer? Who's got the power? Yeah, it's called buying power, right? The customer's got the power. Now, the salesman sometimes seems desperate to sell. Like you go into a General Motors dealership nowadays. You see a desperate salesman, right? And the customer, he knows that the sales guy is desperate, so he could milk him a little. No, no, throw in navigation system, throw in this, throw in that. Now he wants to make sort of, you know, uh, more demands. He feels like he's in a position of power, and this guy is desperate, he wants to sell it to me. Right? Now, but well, I'm not really talking about sales. In da'wah, the messenger is desperately giving the message to these people. When they hear the desperation in the messenger, and the concern in the messenger's face, what do they start thinking? They start thinking they're like the customer, they're in a position of power. They're in a position of power. But you know, Allah Azza wa doesn't accept this. Allah Azza wa makes sure that the messenger himself knows that he is never in a position of weakness. He is always in a position of power. And he is in no desperation to sell this to them. If they take it, it's their benefit. If they don't take it, who's lost? Their own loss. He loses nothing. The only reason the messenger is concerned, sallallahu alayhi wa is because of his love of humanity. His love and genuine concern. But he is under no desperation to want to turn them to the deen. He doesn't need to be. And it's what he has is not something you have to try hard to sell. After all, this is so noble, it was sent down when? In Laylatul Qadr. This, is the, this book was sent down at no ordinary time. It was sent down in Laylatul Qadr. You know what Laylatul Qadr is? You know, this, this, these ayat are giving us an appreciation of how awesome the Qur'an is. The Qur'an, you don't need to... You know the ayah previous surah ended, كَلَّا لَا تُطِعْهُ don't, don't pay attention to him. Don't follow him. Don't worry about him, basically. Don't worry about him. And now this ayah is saying, worry about what? Qur'an and said. You've been given something so noble, so remarkable. You don't need to present it in, in a desperate fashion to anyone. You don't need them, they need it. And if they don't take it, they're lost. They missed out on a thousand months of worship. They missed out on something that Allah sent on this most remarkable night. So you have something dignified before you. These people are not worth your time. If they don't want to pay attention, they're not worth your time. And this happens over and over again in the Qur'an, by the way. Whenever Allah talks about the arrogant, He comes back, كَلَّا إِنَّهَا تَذْكِرَ فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُلْ قُولِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Tell them the truth comes from your master. Whoever wants they can believe, whoever wants they can disbelieve. Your laws, basically. Even in Surah Abasa. The guy frowned, you know, the, the Quraysh, the Quraysh leader, the messenger was worried he won't get the message. Allah said, no, no, no. This is a reminder, whoever wants they can remember, they can get lost if they don't want to remember. That's fine. فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَ Because this is something very high. You don't need to sell it to them. They should want to come up to it. They should be honored by the fact that they get to hear something that came down in Laylatul Qadr. It's a gift to them. They should be in sajda before Allah that they got to hear the word of Allah. These, you know, they should be the most grateful because they not only get to hear the word of Allah in the next surah we're going to learn, not only do they get to hear the word of Allah, they get to hear it from the messenger of Allah. Rasulun min Allahi yatlu suhufa mutahara. They should be the most grateful. You don't have to be desperate. If they're not accepting you, they're the most vicious of the vicious. So we learn two things from this. Those who accepted the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we already know this. They're the best of the best. They're the best of all generations. And though who, the, the kuffar who rejected the messenger are the worst of the worst. You're not going to get worse kuffar than the kuffar of the time of the messenger wasallam. The ones who reject Islam today, what are they rejecting? The book. The ones who rejected Islam then, what were they rejecting? The book and who? The messenger to his face. It's twice the crime. <laughs> it's twice the crime. Those are the worst kinds of people. So don't pay attention to them. Subhanallah. Once again, just to tie the two surahs together, the previous surah ended, وَاقْتَرِبْ Come close. Come close. What's the best opportunity to come close to Allah? Laylatul Qadr. The entire surah is the opportunity for you to come close to Allah. It's like it gives you a manual. Now that I've commanded you to come to close, how do you come close to me? 
And the whole discourse has revolved around the Qur'an in both surahs. Began with Iqra. It began with Iqra. This surah, Inna anzalnahu. Then Fajr at the end, which is again, Inna Qur'an al-Fajri, kana mashhuda. The Qur'an of, uh, the, of Fajr prayer is certainly that which will be witnessed. One last riddle we'll solve, inshallah ta'ala, we'll move on, it's a minor issue. But because we're living in the scientific age, sometimes people try to poke science into the Qur'an. They say, well, it's, if it's Laylatul Qadr in Pakistan, but then it's night, daytime over here, so which one's the right Laylatul Qadr? Right? And they try to do things like that. And then some people, silly people come out and say, well, the Day of Judgment. If it's the Day of Judgment, and it's the day in Africa, what about Europe? Is it going to be later on over there? Right? People say, to try to use science, to try, try to poke holes. You know how beautifully Allah answers these things? How? The day, the, the earth on the day of judgment will what? وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ It's flattened out. It's flattened out. There's no night and day anymore. It's gone. And how do you tell night and day? Sun and moon, right? What happens on the day of judgment? وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ Sun and moon are collapsed into each other. So there's... That your concept of night and day, what you think of as night, what you think of, that's all gone on that day. You don't, you know, these are silly things that people use to ridicule the religion, really. But we should be more careful when we talk about the deen. Similarly, this day of, this issue of Laylatul Qadr, you know, because it's just night, Allah didn't include the day. Some of us said it includes the day, because in Arabic literature, when you say Layla, it can include the day and the night. But, and if you say Nahar, it includes the night and the day. That's the only difference. When you say Layla, it's night, then the next day. When you say Nahar, it's day and the next night. That's the only difference, right? So that's one explanation. The other is, you know how the night travels? Like the sun travels, right? And as the sun is traveling, what's trailing behind it is the night. Right? So Laylatul Qadr lasts, it goes this revolution around the entire earth. So it's not, you know, for that, for that's one big continuum. It's one big continuum, opportunity after opportunity to catch Laylatul Qadr. There's no contradiction here, subhanAllah. Right? Uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal give us the blessing of seeing Laylatul Qadr and taking full advantage of it in the coming year. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who already found Laylatul Qadr in the Ramadan that just passed. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless all of us with the recitation of Qur'an and the love of it and a, a correct understanding of it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.